Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the author of What is WebSphere and the SCGA Certification Guides and Exam Question Guides. If you want to get Java certified, head over to my site, www.scga.com. Lots of great information there, um, even lots of free tutorials at mcnz.com. So check that out, and uh, when you're over there, I'd always appreciate it if you uh, kind of checked out some of my sponsors and uh, maybe clicked on a Google ad or two um, and see what my sponsors are up to as well. Anyways, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about right now was working with a portlet session. And I've created a, a fairly simple portlet that keeps track of the number of times you well, go to the page that this portlet is on. So as I maximize and minimize this window and refresh this particular portlet, you notice that it keeps track of the number of times that I've viewed it. I can even go to another page and then come back. And when I come back again, well, basically, it keeps track of how many times the do view method has been called, and it keeps track of that. It may, creates a, a stateful experience for the user by using the portlet session, and it actually has a little counter in there. And I think the counter is called something like uh, times visited. And here's the simple session portlet, the class that implements that portlet. And as you can see, I just get the session from the user. And uh, I work with this property called times visited, which is in the session. And basically, times visited represents the number of times users have been to the site. This piece of code is for the first time they come to the site. As you can see, after the first time, we get the value out of the session and then increment it by one um, and then put it back into the session. Now, anyways, uh, what I thought might be neat is if I actually had another portlet on this page that could read that session value, uh, a separate portlet, not just a, a copy of the original portlet. Um, but you can't do that. It's not possible. So so watch this. I'm going to just create another portlet, create a new JSR168 portlet. It's an empty portlet. And this portlet is going to be called the session viewer portlet. I think that looks good. I'll just copy all this stuff here. La, 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 la. And of course, I always put it in com.exam scam.portlet. Make sure I spell that right. I'll just call it the session viewer portlet. Um, except all the defaults, I'm not going to have any special modes here. And essentially, when this comes up, um, I'm actually going to copy a bit of code that is from my book. I'm going to cheat a little bit. This is a way for me to uh, kind of test my code, make sure that everything in my book works. Um, also helps, gives me a chance to explain some of the stuff that I'm doing to you. Um, anyways, in this session viewer portlet, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get that times visited value. Notice times visited spelled all lowercase letter the exact same way it is inside of the other portlet. I'm going to try and get that out of the session, session get attribute times visited. And after I've got it out of the session, I'm just going to print out, hey, I found the count in the session, and print what the count is, count.toString. And as you'll notice, times visited here is spelled exactly the same as times visited right here. Now, one thing I should mention, probably should have mentioned earlier, is session management really shouldn't be done in the view method in the rendering phase of a portlet. And you notice that I'm doing all the session management in the do view method. Um, really, session management should be done in the action processing phase. And I'm going to factor that into my application just a little bit later and you'll see some of the problems that happens when you do session management in the, the view method of a portlet. But regardless, I've got the session viewer portlet which uh, I want to run and what I'm hoping will happen is when this portlet, the simple session portlet runs, underneath it I'll have my session viewer and it'll also have access to this particular value down here. Um, now, what I'm going to have to do is, uh, I believe I'm just going to have to restart my server, restart the WebSphere portal server, and you'll see it stopping and eventually starting again. And then I will right click on portlet sessions and say run, run on server. And that should bring everything up. Also, in the meantime, I'm going to close those open web browsers. They're just taking up space. We don't need them. Okay. And this will only take a moment. As you can see, it's already starting up. Okay, and as you can see, our server is now magically started. I'm going to right click, say run, run on server, run on my portal test environment, maximize this window.
And let's see what happened. Now, by default, information that's placed into a portlet session isn't shared with any other portlet. So right now, when I kind of go and work on my original simple session portlet, notice that the other, this other portlet, which is in fact packaged in the same portlet application, part of the same WAR file, can't actually get access to that information. And all we keep printing out is couldn't find the count in the session, and that's because even though we're saying session get attribute times visited, which is the same code that we have in the session portlet, session get attribute times visited, okay, a portlet can't share session data by default with other portlets in the same application. Now there is a way around that. There is a way to share data with portlets in JSR 168 portlet application development. And that's by using something special called the portlet sessions application scope. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to, 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 to my simple session portlet. And when I say get attribute, I'm going to get at, say get attribute from the application scope. And similarly, when I set the attribute, I'm going to set the attribute in the portlet application scope. Notice how I'm adding a new parameter to the get attribute and set attribute methods. I'll have to make sure I do it all the time. So there we go. You can see now when I'm setting something in the session, I'm setting it in the application scope. Uh, similarly, for the session viewer, what I need to do is when I get the times visited, I get it out of the application scope. Okay, so now when I go to my web browser, and I'm going to close that window, I don't know if I'm going to have to restart this or not, but I'll run, say run on server, take a look at my portlet, and notice in the simple session portlet, number of time visiting this portlet is 3, I found the count in the session 3, and we can maximize and minimize, we got 4, 5, and 5, so now they're actually sharing the data. One of the things you, you may have noticed though is, uh, geez, I don't know if I can go back. Can I go back? No, I can't, darn. Um, the very first time that it actually showed up, the session viewer portlet said the count is 1, and the simple session portlet said, hey, you haven't been to this site before. So this particular portlet was saying you've been here once. This portlet is saying you'd never been here before. That's because this portlet was running first. It was then incrementing the, the count to 1, and then this portlet was running second, and this portlet was reading that number 1, indicating that the person had actually been to the, to the portlet more than once. Um, that's actually kind of one of the funny things that can happen when you try and do session management in the rendering phase, that is, inside of the do view or do edit or do help methods of a portlet. You really should do session management in the action processing phase of a portlet. And I'm going to factor that into this application very, very shortly. But that's it for about now. That's how we actually work with the portlet session. Um, as I said, I am the author of What is Webster. I'd love it if you went to Amazon, ordered a few copies off me, and charged it to your boss. Uh, please pick up a copy of the SCGA guide um, and the certification questions guide as well. Check out my site, uh, pulpjava.com, scga.com, mcnz.com. It's kind of like McKenzie. And uh, when you're there, um, please go and check out what some of our sponsors have to offer. It's always interesting to see um, what they're doing. So click on a Google ad or two and help support the site. That's about it for this tutorial. The last thing I'm going to say is happy Java.